Now. What's up everybody? Welcome to McCacken 2023. We are back again this year, but this time the blazer you see behind me right here. We were back at the invite of Bob and Ian Ashton again. Extremely generous of them to invite us back. They really wanted Nathaniel to bring the blazer this year because they loved what he did on Power Tour with the mobile welding rig and they saw all the people that he helped out. They were on Power Tour as well and actually saw it firsthand, but they follow our adventures on social media and they just said, you know what? Bring the blazer. We want people to to know what you did, to be enthused, to get into the trades and see that somebody young is doing it. And so here we are. You guys might recognize this car. This is our friend Christoph Koslowski, right over there. He's back again with his Cuda with the leaning tower power, but this year he's got the fiberglass front end swapped out on it. And the youth section is growing. There's um, Nathan, another guy, another Nathan, there with his 99 Corvette, the Cuda, Blazer, Impala, Super B, and then there's other uh, cars owned by uh, the younger generation kind of throughout the rest of the show here. This is a chance to kind of tell a little bit about their story and that's important to us for a lot of reasons. I think all of us that are car enthusiasts, probably probably everybody here, we all have a moment or a time or an event that really sort of turned a page and set us up for our interest in cars, cool cars. And I've noticed that as time has marched on, I'm now deep into my sixth decade here on planet Earth, that there is a new generation of enthusiasts that seems to be kind of coming up. And I think a lot of that has to do with not only how cool these old vintage cars are, but it's how well we as car clubs and a car community and as parents and grandfathers that we're sharing our stories and we're sharing our love and our passion with cars, with a younger, uh, with a younger demographic. And, and all of that effort seems to be paying off. And what we've got here for you now is I've got 12, 12 younger enthusiasts here uh, that have decided that, you know what, they're going to kind of put away their stage fright or if they're shy a little bit, and they're going to honor us, and I mean that sincerely, with their interest in cars, their story, and we're going to learn a little bit about each one of them. So what I'm going to do is, these guys aren't in any particular order, so I'm going to start with the order that they actually registered with me in. I want to start with Daniel Mahoy, 1976 Chevy Blazer. And I think with some really good stories about that particular vehicle, the connection with Power Tour, and even more than that. Fill us in, brother. Yeah, so I have a 76 Blazer here that's here at the show. Um, it's essentially my work truck slash uh, mobile welding rig. So I take it out on uh, different events like Power Tour, and I basically offer it as a service for anyone who's broken down um, to come find me. And if they need repairs, I can come help them out. And get them back on the road so yeah how did you get that vehicle and what motivated you to kind of go in that direction yeah so I technically actually won the vehicle in a giveaway by Mopar's uh, 5150 over there they were doing a giveaway of the blazer and I put in a uh, submission basically saying I'm gonna be using it for this and this and they were like yeah you win so oh. we got the um, got the blazer from them and then did some work on it, put an LS in it, and uh, just kind of outfitted it the best we could to do the things we wanted to do with it. So tell us about uh, your participation in Hot Rod Power Tour. 
Yeah, I mean, I've been doing power tour since 19. I took it off with my, went on my Monza the first few years. Remember that one? Yep. Um, been taking, been, been doing that for quite a few years. It's actually, I think that's where I met Bob and Ian. Um, uh, that's how I got to this show. So, been doing that and it's just been, uh, it's a really great community of people who go on that uh, event every year and I love doing it. So I just kind of thought, you know, doing this uh, welding rig would be a really good way to get back to the community that's kind of helped me get into this hobby. So, yeah. Well, man, so glad you're here. And you know, you mentioned Bob. All of you may not know him. Bob Ashton, the guy that puts this event together, great friend of mine and a great friend of the community. Bob, raise your hand. Folks can see you there. I found out about this guy right here. We have a couple. Last year, they wanted to help um, encourage younger people. So they came to me and asked what they thought would be a cool thing to do. And what they came up with was to an award, a uh, Miller Welding set to one of the participants. And about $2,000 worth of a whole complete Miller Welding set. So they went through and, and talked to each of the younger participants and kind of did an interview. Had a really, really hard time choosing who the winner would be to make a long story short. Nathan was the winner. So. What I found out not too long ago was that he decided, I don't know whether you had purchased a welder or, or just didn't oh, need it, no. and over the weekend he had met Christoph, and at the end of the show, gave the welder to Christoph. So yeah, I had just... And, nope, not looking for any, I didn't even know it until recently, and it sort of blew my mind. <laughs> Well, I had just basically Thank bought a nice welder myself, and I knew that you know, if I took it, it wouldn't really get put to as use as, as much as it could have been. So I knew Christoph could have used it more than I could. So. Cool, man. Huh. All right, you guys know this car. Byron has gotten some new things added to the interior lately that I haven't seen yet. Right. He's gonna show us. There's no more plastic in this car. Okay. It's all been wrapped. It's all. Vinyl. Oh yeah, yeah. It's all been wrapped and, and it's padded. Oh, nice. Oh, even up here. <laughs> Detail. Kick panels. All everything that matches. Oh my gosh. It's all been wrapped. Yep. That's so nice. So. And I had to put a spare tire just for fun. <laughs> Look how big the spare tire is. <laughs> like, is it like? It, does it touch right here? Yeah. I'll bet it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That's actually a cool idea. Not that we can afford to buy a fifth tire because we got big tires like you do on our uh, our project. Well, that's one of the last set of tires. Well, yeah, yeah. Grab the used one. Well, this is a really heavy tire. There's nothing in there. Oh, <laughs> no just a tire. Okay. So you guys know this car. He's added a few details to it. I love the new valve covers. The Don Hardy. Let's see, how many liters is this? Six point. Six two. So it's a six two, LS three, Don Hardy LS three. Yeah. I just love this. I love that you you got this car built, but it's just constantly evolving. You've got the the new library on the side. He okay. races it. He even wrecked it at one point and had to have it fixed. If you look at here, my new screens, 3D printed. 3D printed screens on the inside there. Oh, wow. Me. Chevy bow ties. Oh, really? Hang on. Chevy bow ties, he says. Oh, yeah, I see him. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a rock catcher because all the rocks are coming down in my door jam. Scratching yeah. up the door jam completely. Okay. So you just won an award. Yes. What did you win? Oh, here it is, right here. My celebrity pick. Donnie Bass. Brass. Donnie Frass. Brass. Brass. Okay. And what size are the tires and rims again? They're, they're the same on all four, right? They're all same four. Eleven team by. Eleven team. <laughs> Eleven by. They're 18s, right? 18s, yeah. yeah, they're 18s. 11 by 18. 11 by 18. 
Who knew that you could put an 11 by 18 on a Chevy Vega? <laughs> Not very easily, Not especially the front. All right. That's where you're All right, let's get a front view of this car here. I mean, just come on, guys. This is the best Vega in existence. By the way, guys, this was an original Cosworth Vega before you converted it to a 76 front end and, oh, by the way, a V8 wide body. But it started out life as an actual 75 Cosworth Vega, right? And what was the number? 756. So, okay, yeah. Earlier than an earlier one. Yeah, that's an early one. A three-digit Cosworth Vega. Well, I liked what it turned into, so I, I can't really complain. Yeah, <laughs> this is amazing. Thanks, Byron. Oh, wow, look at this. This is the Turbo Smoky Unique Vega. And there's the 140 cubic inch engine with a turbo, as you can see there. It just runs up to the front in a little bit. And then, yeah. Wow. I don't know the full history of this car. There's obviously some controversy as to its authenticity. Maybe the engine itself might have been a Smoky Unique project and they built the car around it as a, you know, what could have been, but nobody's really saying. Like they're afraid to kind of, you know, come out and say this is an actual car built by him. I don't really think it was, but it's cool nonetheless. It's a drag car. Maybe I should read all this and uh, fill you guys in, but still pretty cool to see a Vega of this caliper in the show. Is there something back here? Oh. Manual. There we go. Yep. All right. Here's one of the cars I actually came here to see. The Rapid Transit Cuda that was just discovered here not too long ago. And there's the builder right there. Amazing. I can't believe how well preserved it is, too. I mean, come on, guys. Still original paint. If you get up close, you can kind of see it. It's cracking a little bit. But I don't even care. I'm not even mad. That's amazing. All right, so Nathaniel and I are looking at a pretty special car here we, we just learned about. Yeah, so this is Dave Miller's car that he's been building for this. This is Dave was the guy who awarded me the Feature Fabricator Award last year. Last year, yep. This is like, what, a 507? It's a BMW 507. It's a replica of like a model that he just made bucks for and did it all himself. Yeah, he had a, a, a really small scale model. And from that, he scanned it and made a buck of the entire body, yeah. used an original chassis of another BMW, and built this car from scratch. It's no wonder he was really wanting to encourage the next generation to get into fabrication, because look at what he did. Here's a lot of the pictures. There's, there's Steve right there. But, um, yeah, I get it now. Right now, it's just in single-stage primer. It's in the driving and testing phase, and there's really not much of an interior. It'll be done by next year. It'll be in full paint with a full interior. But I'd say he's made pretty good progress so far. This is just amazing. Wow. Really cool. Yeah.
want you all to check this out. Gary and Kristoff here, our friends from the last couple of years, set up the most amazing little food buffet out here to get away from the crowd and the expensive prices. We got this little table set up here on a couple trash cans and they brought a microwave that's full of food and drinks. Set up a little dining room table here on the back of another trash can. We got the spread. <laughs> and it's private. We're back here where it's quiet. And you guys do this every year. And it took yeah. us three years to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I appreciate this, guys. Somebody did that. That's, yeah, that's what Hey, we got a crew here from Mopar's 5150 in front of the blazer that they gave away to us, what, two, couple, two, three years ago now? Yeah. We've had it, uh, we've actually had it obviously useful here for the last couple of years. You've done a lot of cool stuff with it. Yeah. And we finally got a chance to thank these guys firsthand. So Troy, Tony, Davis, Davis Rob, thank you so much. Mark, Troy was really the, the brains behind yeah. this. And um, this truck has helped a lot of people. And it's helped uh, help the young man start his own business. And um, a lot of broken down cars and trucks on the side of the road because of your generosity, so thank you. Well, we've been watching you for, what, two and a half years? Make this thing better and better and better. And we couldn't be, <laughs> be happier with what you guys have done with this. So uh, we appreciate, well, I appreciate it. that it's very much. That. Yeah, all and right. We're looking forward to doing more. Yeah, yeah so same. Let's do it some more. All right, thanks, all right. buddy. All right, you guys have heard us talk enough and chit chat with all of our friends, but you guys really haven't seen much of the car show here. So let me turn the camera around and show you the rest of the show here. It's pretty awesome. All right, it's almost time for the award show. We almost forgot. We were uh, having such a good time talking with uh, our friend Dave around his BMW that we uh, almost forgot to head up here in time. I got the trophy here in my hand for next year's Future Fabricator Award. Let me show you the trophy. This is the one Nathaniel made from some lawnmower parts we had and a couple extra wrenches and some bar stock that we had laying around the garage. And this is gonna be awarded to this year's Future Fabricator Award. So we'll find out who the winner is here in just a minute. Chevy Corvette, Robert Coombe with the 1954 Mercury Custom. We saw the BMW 507 up in the front, the crazy creation. Now, hopefully you didn't walk right by it and just think it was a funny looking little car because underneath that car 
That car was built from the ground up by Dave Bolner out of Texas, who's a better known as Old Fire Walnut. And Dave and his wife Kelly are pretty passionate, as I am, about keeping young people involved. So last year they came up with a new award called the Future Fabricators Award. And with that, with some recognition, there's a handmade trophy which was built by last year's inaugural winner. And where's our winner from last year? Here he is. Nathan hates when people want to give him a lot of attention or anything, so if you don't want to come up, but first of all, congratulations on winning last year. He's, he's over here, he's pretty low-key and mellow. Anyway, I'd like to have Nathan present this year's winner, Gary Thomas, with the award, first of all. Now, along with this award, handcrafted by Nathan, Nathaniel. Now, that's not all, because you will also be going home with $2,000 welding, Miller welding set complete. And, and we do have it here. We didn't drag it up here to the stage. But don't leave because we're going to load it in your trunk. And um, one little quick story that Nathaniel's not going to want me to tell anybody. So this young man, <laughs> he won the award. And he's a fantastic welder and fabricator. He started his own welding business, in fact, the mobile welding business where I'm um, coming through this year. 20 years old. He helps. How many guys did you know? A lot. So he helped side of the road, parking lot, whatever. You needed something welded to get to the next stop on Power Tour. He was there with his entire mobile welding rig. So he took his weld, because he already had a welder. He took the one he won and gave it to another young guy. To Kristoff, who's also, I don't know if he's at the war. I think that that's pretty cool. Not only did he do that, but he, I didn't even find out about that until like a month ago. So, not, you know, not looking for any credit or any praise or anything. Just give these guys a hand and all of that. Woo! There is indeed a future in this hobby for all of us. So, thank you guys and keep spreading the word. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, yeah. Legend is a pretty strong word, but if there's anyone that could epitomize that word for our hobby, is this gentleman right here. Arnie's been a friend of mine for many years, and we like to acknowledge the fact that he's still out there doing it, still having fun promoting the hobby, and you know, anytime you get a chance to meet this gentleman, please do, we are honored to have you with us. And you are Living Life of the War Winners in 2024. Yeah. Yeah. 2023, I didn't know what it Yeah, I just want to say one thing. The amount of beautiful cars out here in this complex is breathtaking to me. I could spend a week, probably a month, looking at them and appreciate and enjoy every minute of it. The quality of cars that's in this building is, I can't express my thoughts. They're so perfect and beautiful. And of course, they're cars from my era. That's another thing that makes them so special. Thank you very much to each and every one of you who brought your cars here. Thank you. Thank you. Such an honor. Well, you can hear the engines in the background. That's officially, gentlemen, start your engines because the show is over. We had a great time again this year, just like we always do. We've made great friends at this show. Boy, it's getting loud in here. I should have done this sooner. And uh, But we made some new friends again as well. Awarded the Future Fabricator Award to 
a new young fabricator who's got to make the trophy for next year. We've made friends with him as well. Can't wait to see what he does. Thanks again to Bob and Ian Ashton for inviting us out. It just It's such an honor to be here. I can't even believe our junkie truck is here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on that note, we got to get out of here. So thanks for watching, guys. Always appreciate you. Take care.